Lala Har Dayal Punjabi Lala Haridiala the 14th of October 1884 to the 4th of March 1939 was an Indian nationalist revolutionary He was a polymath who turned down a career in the Indian civil service His simple living and intellectual acumen inspired many expatriate Indians living in Canada and the US to fight against British imperialism during the First World War Biography <inaudible> Early years He was born in a Mathur Kayastha, family on 14 October 1884 at Delhi. Har Dayal was the sixth of seven children of Boli Rani and Gori Dayal Mathur. His father was a reader in the district court. Lala is not so much a surname as a sub-caste designation, within the Kayastha community, but it is generally termed as an honorific title for writers such as the word Pandit which is used for knowledgeable persons in other Hindu communities. At an early age he was influenced by Arya Samaj. He was associated with Shyam Krishnavarma, Vinayak Damodar Savarkar and Bhikaji Kama. He also drew inspiration from Giuseppe Mazzini, Karl Marx and Mikhail Bakunin. He was, according to Emily Brown as quoted by Jürgensmeyer, in sequence an atheist, a revolutionary, a Buddhist, and a pacifist. He studied at the Cambridge Mission School and received his bachelor's degree in Sanskrit from St. Stephen's College, Delhi, India and his master's degree also in Sanskrit from Punjab University. In 1905, he received two scholarships of Oxford University for his higher studies in Sanskrit, Bowdoin Scholarship, 1907 and Casbert Exhibitioner, an award from St. John's College, where he was studying. In a letter to the Indian sociologist, published in 1907, he started to explore anarchist ideas, arguing that our object is not to reform government, but to reform its sick away, leaving, if necessary only nominal traces of its sick existence. The letter led to him being put under surveillance by the police. Later that year, saying, To hell with the ICS! He gave up the prestigious Oxford scholarships and returned to India in 1908 to live a life of austerity. But in India too, he started writing harsh articles in the leading newspapers. When the British government decided to impose a ban upon his writing, Lala Lajpat Rai advised him to leave and go abroad. It was during this period that he came into the friendship of the anarchist Guy Aldred, who was put on trial for printing The Indian Sociologist. He moved to Paris in 1909 and became editor of the Vand Mataram. But he was not very happy in Paris, so he left the Paris and moved to Algeria. There too, he was unhappy and wondering whether to go either to Cuba or Japan. After all he went to Martinique, where he started living a life of austerity. An Arya Samaj missionary, Bai Parmanand went there to look for him, and found him lonely and isolated. The two discussed founding a new religion modelled on Buddhism. Har Dayal was living an ascetic life eating only boiled grain and potatoes, sleeping on the floor and meditating in a secluded place. Guy Aldred later related that this religion's motto was to be atheism, cosmopolitanism and moral law. Emily Brown and Eric Erickson have described this as a crisis of ego identity for him. Parmanan says that Har Dayal agreed to go to the United States to propagate the ancient culture of the Aryan race. Har Dayal went straight from Boston to California, where he wrote an idyllic account of life in the United States. He then moved on to Honolulu in Hawaii where he spent some time meditating on Waikiki Beach. During his stay he made friends with Japanese Buddhists. He also started studying the works of Karl Marx. Whilst here he wrote some phases of contemporary thought in India subsequently published in Modern Review, Parmanand persuaded him by letter to return to California. <laughs> Anarchist activism in America He moved to the United States in 1911, where he became involved in industrial unionism. He had also served as secretary of the San Francisco branch of the Industrial Workers of the World alongside Fritz Wolfheim, later a national Bolshevik after he had left IWW and joined the Communist Workers' Party of Germany. In a statement outlining the principles of the Fraternity of the Red Flag he said they proposed the establishment of communism, and the abolition of private property in land and capital through industrial organization and the general strike, ultimate abolition of the coercive organization of government. 
A little over a year later, this group was given six acres square meters of land and a house in Oakland, where he founded the Bakunin Institute of California, which he described as, "...the first monastery of anarchism." The organization aligned itself with the Regeneración movement founded by the exiled Mexicans Ricardo and Enrique Flores Magan. He had a designated post of a lecturer in Indian philosophy and Sanskrit at Leland Stanford University. However, he was forced to resign because of embarrassment about his activities in the anarchist movement. In California he soon developed contacts with Punjabi Sikh farmers in Stockton, California. Punjabis, great majority of whom were Sikhs, had started emigrating to the West Coast around the turn of the century. Having experienced hostility by the Canadians in Vancouver, they had already become disaffected with the British. Hardale tapped into this sentiment of these energetic Sikhs and other Punjabis. Having developed an Indian nationalist perspective, he encouraged young Indians to gain a scientific and sociological education. With the personal help of Tiha Singh, Tarak Nath Das and Arthur Pope and funding from Jawala Singh, a rich farmer from Stockton, he set up Guru Govind Singh Sahib Educational Scholarship for Indian students. With Shyamji Krishna Verma's India House in London, he established his house as a home for these students. Amongst the six students who responded to the offer were Nan Singh Sara, Durisi Chankia and Gobind Bihari Lal, his wife's cousin. They lived together in a rented apartment close to the University of California, Berkeley. <laughs> Assassination attempt on Viceroy of India At the time, he was still a vigorous anarchist propagandist and had very little to do with the nationalist Nalanda Club, composed of Indian students. However Basanta Kumar Biswas's attempt on the life of the Indian Viceroy, Lord Hardinge, on 23 December 1912 had a major impact upon him. He visited the Nalanda Club hostel to tell them this news at dinner. He delivered a rousing lecture, which ended with the following couplet of the Urdu poet Mir Taki Mir of Delhi India. The hostel then became a party with dancing and the singing of Vand Mataram. Hardale excitedly told his anarchist friends of what one of his men had done in India. He quickly brought out a pamphlet called the Yugantar Circular in which he eulogized about the bombing. Hail! 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 Bomb of 23 December 1912 Harbinger of hope and courage Dear Reawakener of slumbering souls Concentrated moral dynamite The Esperanto of revolution who can describe the moral power of the bomb? It is concentrated moral dynamite. When the strong and cunning in the pride of their power parade their glory before their helpless victims, when the rich and naughty set themselves on a pedestal and ask their slaves to fall down before them and worship them, when the wicked ones on the earth seem exalted to the sky and nothing appears to withstand their might, then in that dark hour, for the glory of humanity comes the bomb, which lays the tyrant in the dust. It tells all the cowering slaves that he who sits enthroned as God, is a mere man like them. Then, in that hour of shame, a bomb preaches the eternal truth of human equality and sends proud superiors and viceroys from the palace and the howdah to the grave and the hospital. Then, in that tense moment, when human nature is ashamed of itself, the bomb declares the vanity of power and pomp and redeems us from our own baseness. How great we feel when someone does the heroic deed? We share in his moral power. We rejoice in his assertion of human equality and dignity. In April 1914, he was arrested by the United States government for spreading anarchist literature and fled to Berlin, Germany. He subsequently lived for a decade in Sweden. He received his Ph.D. degree in 1930 from the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London. In 1932, he got his book Hints for Self-Culture published and embarked on a lecture circuit covering Europe, India, and the United States. He died in Philadelphia on 4 March 1939. In the evening of his death he delivered a lecture as usual where he had said, I am in peace with all. But a very close friend of Lala Hardale and the founder member of Bharat Mata Society established in 1907, Lala Hanuman Sahai did not accept the death as natural, he suspected it as poisoning. In 1987, the India Department of Posts issued a commemorative stamp in his honour, within the series of India's Struggle for Freedom. <laughs> Works by Lala Hardale 
Some of his books with available references are listed below Our Educational Problem, collection of Lalaji's articles. It was published in Punjabi, from Lahore, as a 1922 book with introduction by Lala Lajpat Rai Thoughts on Education, Lalaji wrote many articles in Punjabi published from Lahore and Modern Review published from Calcutta, most of them were against the education policy of British government in India. Mr. Hemchand Kashik gave to the author this book which he published in July 1969. Social Conquest of Hindu Race, a booklet containing 21 pages, proscribed by British Raj and kept in National Archives of India under ACC, No. 74, Ref, Patriotic S. Banned by the Raj Writings of Lala Har Dayal, this book was published in 1920 by Swaraj Publishing House, Varanasi, as mentioned in the book by Vishwa Nath Prasad Verma Adunak Bhartiya Rajnitak Chintan on page 389. 44 Months in Germany and Turkey, this book was published in 1920 by P. S. King and Sons in London, when Lalaji was living in Sweden. Ganesh Shankar Vidyarthi quoted many references from this book in his Kranti Ka Yudgash. Lala Har Dayal G. K. Swadhan Vichar, this book was translated into Hindi by Sri Narayan Prasad Arora and was published in Ragunandan Press, Kanpur by P. T. Ganga Narayan Shukla in 1922. It can be seen in Seth Surajmal Jalan Library, Calcutta. Amrit Me Vish, this was the Hindi translation of above book Thoughts on Education. It was published by Lajpat Rai Prithviraj Sani from Lohari Gate, Lahore in the year 1922. In the National Library, Calcutta under Catalogue No. 181, RC.92.33. Hints for Self Culture, this famous book of Lala Har Dayal was published by High, S. L. Polak & Co. London, UK, in 1934. Jayco Publishing House published it in 1977 from Bombay by obtaining a copyright from its original publisher in 1961. Its Hindi translation has also been published from Katab Gar, Delhi, India, in 1997 under the title Vyaktiva Vikas Sangarsh Aur Safalata. Glimpses of World Religions, it was the presentation of several religions by Lala Har Dayal from so many angles of history, ethics, theology and religious philosophy. It reflects the individuality of every religion in a rational way of thinking. This book was also published by Jayco Publishing House India from Bombay. Bodhisattva Doctrines, Lala Lajpat Rai, who was a mentor of Har Dayal, had suggested him to write an authentic book based on the principles of Gautam Buddha. In 1927 when Har Dayal was not given permission by British government to return to India, he decided to remain in London. He wrote this book and presented it to the university as a thesis. The book was approved for PhD and a doctorate was awarded to him in 1932. It was published from London in the year 1932. Mudalal Banarsidas Publishers of India republished this book in 1970 as the Bodhisattva Doctrines in Buddhist Sanskrit Literature. The Bodhisattva Doctrines in Buddhist Sanskrit Literature This 392-page work of Lala Hardale consists of seven chapters which deal with the Bodhisattva Doctrine as expounded in the principal Buddhist Sanskrit literature. In Chapter 1 the nature of the Bodhisattva Doctrine is described, with particular emphasis upon the distinct characteristics of Arhat, Bodhisattva and Sravaka. Chapter 2 recounts the different factors which contributed to the rise and growth of the Bodhisattva doctrine including the influences of Persian religio-cult, Greek art and Christian ethics. In Chapter 3 the production of the thought of enlightenment for the welfare and liberation of all creatures is expounded. Chapters IV describes 37 practices and principles conducive to the attainment of enlightenment. In Chapter 5 10 perfections that lead to welfare, rebirth, serenity, spiritual cultivation, and supreme knowledge are explained. Chapter 6 defines different stages of spiritual progress in the aspirant's long journey to the goal of final emancipation. The last Chapter 7 relates the events of the Gautama Buddha's past lives as Bodhisattva. This book contains comprehensive notes and references besides a general index appended at the end. This book has been written in a particularly lucid style which exhibits scholarly acumen and the mastery of Lala Hardale in literary art. Appreciations 
According to Swami Rama Tirtha Lala Har Dayal was the greatest Hindu who ever came to America, a great sage and saint, whose life mirrored the highest spirituality as his soul reflected the love of the universal spirit whom he tried to realize. In another appreciation professor, Dharmavira has sketched the picture of Lala Har Dayal which is being quoted here in verbatim, Har Dayal dedicated his whole life to the sacred cause of the motherland. Surely from such a person alone could one ask. Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Let us drink deep at this spring and wax glad and strong and brave in every nerve and fiber of our being. He was one of the race of those who wrote the new era in blood. His course was laborious, truthful, simple, independent, noble, and all these in an eminent degree. His experience of the inward and the outward battle was not inconsiderable and it was not confined to his early manhood, but was spread over his whole life. Lala Har Dayal had the Janak and Dadichi touch and his life demonstrated that he had what it takes. <laughs> <laughs> 